Okay, let's uh, do some chain rule for partial derivatives, okay? Um, I've got this function of two variables, so it's kind of like a surface, and I actually got a good example of this surface, okay? Um, you know, this is pretty much the same thing. It's, say this is the x-axis, you know, we got sort of an upside-down parabola, mm, excuse me, and this is a uh, y axis, you know, we spin it on side, you know, and as long as its height is four, I mean, this is, this isn't a stretch at all to kind of visualize this. So if I wanted to describe to you how it's changing, um, I would use partial derivatives. I give you partial of x and partial y, which are really simple, you know, negative two x, negative two y are the partials for this. Uh, but with the chain rule, I can actually just kind of give you the derivative of the whole thing. Okay, um, you know, but if I did that, I would have to somehow link w, x, and y together. And that wouldn't be too hard to do either, you know, because, you know, x is equal to cosine theta, y is equal to sine theta. I mean, we're, we're not going to do that now, but let's just kind of just think to ourselves that, you know, it's kind of like w is a, now a function of x, which is a function of t and y. Okay, like that, all right? So, with, with, with that sort of approach, okay, we can give you kind of the derivative of the whole thing. So, what, I, what I'd be looking for would be dw dt, okay? So, let's just go ahead and do that. So, so what, what am I going to do right here when I get to the 4? That's just a constant, so its derivative is 0. I get to my x term, and x is actually... Uh, a dependent variable on t now, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and take its derivative, okay, but I'm also going to write dx dt next to it because t is the independent variable, okay, and, and, and really this is almost exactly like implicit differentiation that you did in Calc 1, okay, it's really not much different at all. So now I get to my y term, and the same thing. y is a, is a dependent variable of t, so I'm going to go ahead and take the derivative. But since I don't know what uh, the derivative of, of y is with respect to t, I'm just going to write it you know, generically. Right there, just like that, okay? So, you know, but basically, what do we do? We took... We basically took the partial with respect to x, and I guess it would almost put an f there, but I guess it's a w, times the regular derivative with respect to t, and I guess the, you know, subtraction is really just addition of negative numbers, and I'm, I'm just trying to write the general kind of plain old vanilla formula here. dt like that okay so so that's basically all it is you know I mean it's it's pretty much the exact same thing I think like it, it just kind of gets confusing because you know in your book they draw all these like little diamond diagrams and chains and they throw all these weird proofs like right away I believe in seeing proofs later on after you thoroughly understand this so I, I, I think books tend to confuse people over something that's really pretty simple Okay, so um, it, it, at the end of the day, though, after you after you take the uh, you know the deri the chain rule derivative of this thing, um, there is one catch though, and is that that is that you know you're, you're probably going to want your answer in terms of t. Okay, since we're taking it, you know, since we kind of parametrically defined um, everything, and like I said, that wouldn't be hard to do. You know, x is you know we know the the identities. We should know the identities by heart now. Um, so um, that, that's just basically um, an intro to the chain rule and we'll definitely do some examples and you, you can also do this with three variables um, and all that stuff. So um, hope this just kind of gives you some insight. I mean, it's really not that tough, um, but I, I think it, books kind of make it out to be a, kind of a nasty creature sometimes, at least the ones I do. So I will see you in the next videos when we do examples.